list of our partners and allies. Some of them are not listed because uh, they have, have their tax status doesn't allow it. But um, most of the climate organizations, both the more established ones as well as the newer youth climate oriented ones, are coming together for Earth Day, which starts on uh, the 22nd of April in two weeks and goes three days. Pretty much everybody is doing Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday under the banner of Strike With Us and Future Coalition. I know that many of uh, several of our partners um, as we're partners with that organization, but um, other uh, climate organizations that we work with are partners as well, like Zero Hour and the Climate Mobilization and um, uh, Extinction Rebellion, etc. So this is a really good opportunity for everyone to go online, and um, it was obviously going to be um, held in several cities, which... Um, uh, we can't do because of COVID, but every, everything is going online for three days, and it's uh, going to be uh, speakers, celebrities, politicians, musicians, activists, scientists, youth leaders on the front lines of climate justice. Um, just briefly, I'll give you a rundown of the schedule. April 22nd, which is Wednesday, is strike day. It's a chance to hear from people of color, indigenous leaders, and frontline activists who are fighting for climate action and confronting the fossil fuel industry. So that will be a huge day of activism. If you can only do one day, please do uh, Wednesday the 22nd. Um, it's going to be a day centered on storytelling and community, and uh, we are going to have a part, a role in speaking on that day. Um, April 23rd is Divest. It's a day led by STOP. The Money Pipeline Coalition, which is focusing on ending financing of fossil fuels and building a new economic system that works for the people. Um, we will be talking about how we can cut up credit cards, go to public banking, go to credit unions, get the heck out of banks um, entirely. Um, April 24th is vote. That we're not going to obviously participate in the get out the vote drive which is part of that. But there's another part of that, which is it's going to be, it's the first day of Ramadan. So organizers will be working with the Muslim community to make sure events are accessible for those who are observing and use it as an opportunity to educate people on the holiday. So um, you can go to earthdaylive2020.org. I'll repeat that, earthdaylive2020.org to get information on the activities, we actually have a call tomorrow. I don't have the schedule yet of um, some of the speakers, but um, we'll have more coming out on our social media. We're going to be sharing all this information on our Facebook page, on our Twitter. Um, and uh, Earth Day Live is our hashtag. So hashtag Earth Day Live. Use that whenever you want to talk about uh, uh, Earth Day for the next two weeks. And then please, uh, climate mobilization is a major uh, partner of ours. They're doing really important work in trying to get both Congress and municipalities to declare a climate emergency. We've been really active, one of the most active, in fact, the one that's being held up now as a model for other cities is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where um, I am from and I'm moving back to this year. And we have, uh, not only did they declare a climate emergency, but they are showing they have actually put together like a white paper on how they're going to get to net zero and how they're going to do it. And that is sort of going to be like a template for how other cities are going to um, divest from fossil fuels, get out of fossil fuels, get their, um, get, we need to get to net zero within eight years. <laughs> That's our goal. Point. So um, I am very proud to announce that we have an organization here in California, where I live right now, um, and it's called Return CA. Uh, John Simka, who is a member of MPP and has been very supportive, is ahead of that organization, and he um, got his organization, was spearheaded them, their entry into MPP, and um, I'll just hand it over to him so he can just... Uh, uh, 
think it's under John Pomeroy. Yeah, I see you. I see you raising your hand, Johnny. <laughs> Okay, there I am. Let me. Perfect. Yeah, I got okay, you. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you so much for the introduction, Carol. It's such an honor to be uh, involved with such an uh, amazing organization. Uh, real brief history. I don't want to uh, take too much time, but uh, yes, California, uh, the, the leading um, organization, the largest organization uh, for the Cal Exit movement. Um, I've been their outreach director since uh, right after Bernie was robbed the first time in 2016. I knew that uh, the gig was up and it was time to do something drastic. Uh, so I put my finger on the pulse. I've been involved in California activism uh, since birth, really. And uh, I'm ready to, uh, to do something drastic. So I uh, joined Yes California um, shortly after I was made their outreach director. Uh, I started reaching out to every organization imaginable on all sides of the aisle, um, left, right, center, you name it, anarchists, anybody that would talk to me. And what I found was that a large number of people were disappointed that the indigenous voice was missing from the independence movement. And uh, during the time when California was independent post the Mexican Revolution and in independence from Mexico, uh, and prior to being absorbed against our will into the United States, uh, California was independent and the return of federal lands to the tribes of California was uh, inextricably connected. So uh, I started speaking with as many indigenous people as I could and Return California was born from that effort. Uh, we had our first listening session in Grass Valley last year, uh, very successful, you can see video um, of that meeting on our website, returncalifornia.org. And we're proud to be uh, supporting Movement for a People's Party and Burn the DNC. Um, one thing to check in on regarding uh, the current situation we're in, uh, you may have noticed Gavin Newsom uh, calling California a nation state repeatedly. He said it in an article uh, on Huffington Post, he said it on uh, MSNBC with Rachel Maddow, and he just said it again in a Bloomberg article. And it's pretty um, significant to what we've been working on with California independence. With uh, a free and independent California, we can harness all of the power from multiple parties, from rank, uh, rank choice voting, from uh, the, the popularity of Medicare for all, uh, UBI, all these progressive things that California can do. California's Green New Deal isn't green enough. According to the indigenous people, we have to steward the land. And to Carol's point, we have to stop our reliance on fossil fuels. While everyone's congratulating Gavin Newsom, he's issuing uh, fracking permits. But this is unacceptable, and we have to uh, hold his feet to the fire. We have to congratulate him when he does something right, and we have to hold him accountable when he does something wrong. And uh, just really quickly, um, in June of 2019, uh, Gavin Newsom issued an apology to Native Americans for state's historical wrongdoings and established the Truth and Healing Council. He then, in December, reestablished the Commission of the Californias which the three governors of California, Baja, and Alta all are together again and issued a memorandum of understanding between the government of the state of California of the United States and the government of the state of Baja and the government of Baja Sur. So these things are all indicating that uh, he's serious about um, our independence and what he's doing with COVID and everything else is really crazy. So um, our mission at Return California is to amplify indigenous voices. Uh, it's really that simple. We'd like to see all the federal lands return to the tribes and uh, an independent California could govern jointly with uh, the indigenous nations of California. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Thank you, John. Carol, did you have anything else to add? 
Uh, no, no, just that it's, uh, I appreciate uh, their support. It's a really great activist organization, and um, I love what they're doing with the environment <laughs> and climate, too. It's really important. Most definitely. Thank you both for, for sharing and getting, letting us know what's going on. I'm especially happy to hear something's going on uh, for Earth Day, because I know here in the D.C. area we were looking at